welcome to this episode of menopause conversations honestly i'm so thrilled i just said just before i press record i can't believe it's taken this long to get these two superstars <laughs> well, on we've been waiting well, <laughs> <laughs> they've literally been waiting <laughs> some time at that table for me to make the call but they're here everybody and anyone who knows me knows that i am so time poor uh, that I don't get to listen to lots of stuff, but I do always make time to listen to my favourite podcasters, Jinty and Lou, better known as Women Kind Collective. Here they are. Hello, ladies. Hello. Hello. <laughs> right, so before we get going, who's Jinty and who's Lou? There's Jinty and there's Lou. But let me tell you a little bit more about them. So they are the founders of the brilliant podcast Women Kind Collective hosted by Ginty Sheeran and Lou Hawkins Thompson. Um, it's a lively series. Um, it's never dull. It covers a range of topics relevant to women, strong focus on menopause, reproductive health and the broader challenges faced by women and women in society. Um, that, you, there's never anything dull on your grid because just when you think, oh, yeah, they're covering that, they're covering something else as well. How many episodes have you got under your belts? 135 oh, yeah. on Sunday. That'll 135 on Sunday. It's amazing. And they incorporate personal stories, expert interviews, candid conversations. Uh, and they really make their podcast so engaging and so informative. It's like, oh, no, we've come to an end of a season. But you're in for a treat because they're about to start their next season. So um, I thought it'd be lovely to get them on um, and to share with you how you can bridge that gap between where you are and where you want to be through this time known as menopause. But um, so that you understand a little bit more about them, because I love them to the bones of them. Tell <laughs> us about how you met each other. How do you know each other? Where did it all start? Well, we met about nearly 40, nigh on 40 years ago now. We were both had, had just very been, young, very young. <laughs> Yeah, we're both hairdressing in, in Exeter, weren't we? We both live in Exmouth, hairdressing, and we used to work together. We had a few nights out where we sort of met up, and then we worked together. Yep. And we used to catch the train up, and I used to drive up to Exeter, and we just... we we, it, we I used to tell you you had the wrong one shoe, one driving shoe and one yeah, I used to wear shoe the wrong <laughs> shoe. Um, she, she made me put on two stone by plying me with Chelsea buns on the way. <laughs> we always got on, didn't we? Always, always got on. I was always blamed for her hangovers by our boss, even right. though I had thrown the drink down her neck. Um, <laughs> but it, it was just, and then throughout that, then obviously, you know, life happens and work changed. Had children around the same time. Yeah, so. and we were always in and out of each other's lives, weren't we? We mm. weren't like in the same, really, really close. I wouldn't say them, but we were always. I think, I think we were quite close. <laughs> oh listen don't well, have a disagreement we girls like play we nicely were like, we were like that and, um, but we were always in and out of each other's lives with children and friends and at parties and we saw each other regularly yeah. actually didn't we yeah throughout we've been e we've been in each other's lives through I think the most important parts of our lives as yeah well, and then it was we? sort of menopause really that kind of menopause and a, a bit of that and a bit of pandemic well, which changed down, life, a, a life yeah. for a lot of people that kind of brought us much closer because we were we would my, my husband got trapped away for five months um during lockdown and and Lou was a, a brilliant friend and we had facetimed every week um and and it was great and it was one of those during one of those conversations I said what about recording one of these? Because we've got lots of other friends that can't see their other friends. And I was listening to a lot of podcasts around that time, which a lot of them were very academic, very, I, I, I thought I've learned lots, but I want to have a bit of fun now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. fun, light conversation. Yeah. We thought we were hilarious at the time, yeah, Amantha. Yeah, we and we thought, actually, we, worked, <laughs> we did a bit of research and realised that, well, Jinty did, that you didn't have to pay anything. No. So even if it's just us listening... And laughing at each other, that's all right. We can do Brilliant. that. Brilliant. I love that. See, I did not know that. I've just always thought you've been around for forever. Um, but it's lovely, isn't it? What a rich story, friend. And you do get that. And, you know, anyone who hasn't, I mean, where have they been, first of all? But anyone who hasn't seen, heard or listened to these two, it really is just lovely. It's just like you've just experienced. They bounce off of each other and it's absolutely wonderful. And so... Um, how did you come up with the, the title Women Kind Collective? What was the inspiration for that? There was a there was a lot going. There was a lot of bits of paper in the bin. 
Yes, there was a lot but of we, texting. We knew we wanted the the kind bit was really important, mm. and obviously we knew it was going to be around sort of women's health, but we didn't want it to be um, too exclusive to just women. You know, so women kind kind we thought encompasses so we like um, a group thing. So that's where the collective and came that's from. where the collective yeah. one club. I don't know, collective just seemed better than the women yeah. kind club. Yeah, yeah, because there's a lot of clubs, isn't there? There's a, there's, there's, there's a lot of clubs. So, yeah. um, so I've got some questions to ask you, and you don't even know what they are, which is so nervous. exciting. Okay, so here we go. Question number one to to both of you. So, your podcast often blends humour with serious discussions, and it really does. And it's usually around women's health. How do you balance addressing sensitive topics like menopause with maintaining an engaging and light hearted tone? Because that is not easy. How do you balance that out? I mean, because I know a hell of a lot of prep goes into each episode. What What's your formula? Probably a little bit of self, um, what's the word? Dep, 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 not deprivation. <laughs> <laughs> That's the wrong Well, You can see brain fog gets involved here. It begins with a D. Dep Deprecation. Deprecation. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, a little bit of that we're not off so if we're talking menopause um we don't mind talking about um our own kind of you know struggles and you know the funny stuff um and i think we're vo both very intuitive we're both taurians i don't know whether that makes any difference but we're both very intuitive we know when to be serious and uh, and to you know and we know when we can just when it's time to drop something in yeah about ourselves and <laughs> yeah. i think well, it's, it's being, you know, we're, be, we're very open. We're very vulnerable with our guests as well. You know, we, we are what we are. Um, we've never professed to be medics, um, professionals in any way. We, we're, we're two women who like a cup of tea and a chat. And we want, the, we want to learn, yeah. ultimately. Mm. We're not there to tell people what we know. Although sometimes we we've learned stories, a lot, but yeah. we want to learn from other people. And I think as soon as you start telling people that you know stuff is when you stop listening, you stop learning. And that's, we want to learn till we die. Oh, well, every day's a school day, yeah. Nancy. Yeah, and that's so lovely. And having been a guest on your show, I've definitely felt that. And you are always so generous, really and truly you sort of make people feel very welcome um, and you are you're like you're like you can tell that you're hungry for the knowledge and actually that in itself has, has created a, a fascination around you as a duo I mean you've done so many speaking events people really do want you to come and either launch their conferences be part of their keynote sessions so don't undersell yourselves too much ladies you know you <laughs> clearly are doing the right thing and you're getting a good job done and the reality is, I mean, the, the thing is, you, your cheeky personality is sort of like tra transpire in all sorts of places. I see you've got the books behind you. Now, let's come, let's talk about the whole book gorilla -ing thing. Tell people what that is, because you're like two little elves leprechauns, a little bit cheeky, oh, aren't you? It. Yeah. We do, it sort of came from being annoyed going into big bookshops. Big, and big, big, big. And not being able to find the women's health or not being able to find menopause books. Oh, it's all diet And then books, when you it? did, it was usually on the top floor, stuck in a dark, dingy corner yeah. um, among the self-help. I mean, what, what is, why is it self-help? It's not You're not helping yourself because uh, you don't know the information, do you? So, no. no. So we, we started, if they had any, which they, they usually did, like one copy of each yeah. book. So we, we started, you know, bringing our favourites, the ones we really like, to the front like this in the front where people could can can see it and yeah I had quite a good experience in Waterstones in Exeter where I did I'd just done one yeah. and a, a group of young uh, two girls and a lad walked in and 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 she just said she just said oh men they were back in their 20s oh menopause the lady in boots just offered me some anti-wrinkle cream do you think I should buy this and had a little <laughs> little titter but I thought it's they're talking about it's, menopause it's these conversations people now. It's, it's having those conversations yeah. bringing it yeah. to real yeah but we love it we 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 allowed to swear yes of course you are we love the fuckery of going in a bookshop <laughs> and messing everything up <laughs> literally don't we oh it's fun and oh is anyone looking lou yeah <laughs> they probably don't care do a little dance. Them. we're just moving them <laughs> and if they're, if they're not looking at that we do a dance just to make sure that they actually <laughs> yeah. are looking are you looking now, everybody? Yeah, look. <laughs> we just messed about off. with the books. 
<laughs> yeah, go off and have a coffee and think, oh, I wonder, I wonder if they picked something up now and thought, what the heck is that doing here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go Why is this in the cookery back? section? <laughs> <laughs> and what is it you call it? I love the phrase that you gave it. What is it you call it? What, book gorilla ring yeah, yeah. Sort of gorilla ring so gorilla ring, yeah it's all right to encourage everybody to do that because menopause yes. absolutely needs to come out of the shadows um it's always been a conversation of our time it's just that we weren't either given permission or the platform on which to have it until womankind collective so that is brilliant and so with that in mind you've not just been doing that you've also been using your voice in other ways and this is how um I think this is how I first became aware of you because I was quite late to Instagram, been doing loads of stuff on LinkedIn. And I saw this campaign for a menopause clinic in Devon, you know, where's our clinic? So tell us about that, because that you've been on BBC Spotlight News, haven't you? You've been on the radio talking about it. Share with people watching and listening today what that's been all about and why it was so needed. It, well, it started um, going back to the um, menopause rally in 2021 mm. when I, we went up to London and the uh, Caroline Harris and, and the focus group got the prescription, HRT prescription one year through. That was great. And on the way back, uh, BBC Radio Devon called me and had a live conversation with them, which was fantastic. And they said, so who who else was there from Devon? And I said, oh, I don't think there was anyone else. You were on your own. I, I had to work. Right. You had to work. work. So it was just me. And I, I got back and I thought, right, what? We'd already spoken as, as friends to our other friends. And we kind of knew uh, that women were having quite a lot of difficulty with mainly the complex cases. You know, GPs, our GPs weren't too bad. But um, so, oh, yeah, it started as a question to our local MP. I didn't want to start a campaign, <laughs> to be honest. It was a question <laughs> to our local MP. What? are you know are you aware that people from devon have to travel a round trip of 120 miles to our nearest nhs menopause clinic um even further for people in cornwall um are you aware of this and what can we do you know are devon and i also wrote emailed um nhs devon the icb as it was at the time uh what are you doing about menopause are you aware of the campaigning the menopause warriors what's going on didn't hear back from actually I heard back from them 11 months later oh my God. Um, I know but in the meantime our MP had kind of got involved and he pushed the NHS Devon NHS for a meeting mm-hmm. and basically it's gone from there what we thought would take a year we're nearly three years and we still haven't got one but we're we we think we're almost there, don't we? We're within yeah. touching distance. We've had lots of talks, and the of course the Women's Health Hub um, funding has massively helped push that uh, yeah. forward. Um, so we may hear we've got a meeting next month, um, in which hopefully we shall hear get some good news about some you know get some dates and things in and and underlying that a lot has been happening with doctors we've had six doctors in devon uh, now training with the bms um, certification mm-hmm. advanced we've also got a secondary care we've got a gynecologist um, that's also going to do the advice and hopefully do the advice and guidance in devon um, so it is all it's it's all there ready to go one more thing formulary that's been changed oh, yes that was anyone Cameron's listening... not on it now thank right. you to Juliet, the wonderful dr juliet balfour in somerset who's helped, been helping our devon doctors with that all the newer um transdermal um estrogen is on there now so and you to just stand so Amazing. Amazing. And so for people just, um, you know, uh, doc- doctors follow prescribing based on what's available on the formulary. So if your product isn't on the formulary, you ain't going to get it. Um, so that yeah. is massive. And we know that the transdermal route is the best route for um, getting HRT into the body, particularly estrogen. So that's amazing. And this is the point, isn't it? You know, like you said, I never wanted to do a campaign. But at what point did you feel you had to? Like, you know, because you could have so easily was, gone, we'll just leave it to someone else, shall we, and hope for the best? I think it was from, like, the cafes, the menopause cafes we ran and the stories we had. And then Ginty put a shout out to get some um, testimonials in from from women 
this is just a quarter of and they were absolutely we we, we both had tears at re- reading some of them you know that women are desperate completely desperate and not being heard and being fobbed off um no you can't leave that can you no we then felt a bit of responsibility yeah. but once we started talking about it and actually um talking about a clinic and people going nhs menopause clinic are there do, do they exist Is a thing? and there's only 12 counties <laughs> um amongst 40 odd in England that haven't got them and the, and most of them that haven't got them um there is a pathway of referral to the neighboring county whereas our pathway of referral generally is is pulled which is as you know miles and miles and miles away if you can get an appointment and and, and it's not an insignificant number of women it's only a quarter of a million women in yeah. Devon you know it's not it's not insignificant yes. um, and and that's the thing isn't it you know um, we were talking a bit before coming on on air saying about you know we've got to look at the equality here we've got to look at you know how inclusive the whole treatment of menopause is you know um we live in a largely white um county don't we you know but actually in lots of places you know where you're either brown or you're asian or or black you know, we just know there is all sorts of stigmas and taboos, which means that people can't access this. They're sceptical. They're they're frightened of the medical profession and the medical systems. And so there's a whole levelling up thing that needs to take place, isn't there, between the haves and the have nots. And it's just not OK to expect women to keep calm, carry on um, without the, the supports that they need and like you say particularly those specialist supports but we do need gps to take an interest so you know yeah. wherever possible they need to be getting on on this uh bus as we say yeah, but yeah, what... I'm, just, I'm just gonna say about working class we're both from working class families and there's a lot of sort of people that just think hrt is a middle class person's thing yeah. that you know because because that's the way it's sort of portrayed um in a lot of um in a lot of media um so they either think it's not for them or that or that hrt won't be for them, but they don't realize that you can get all this stuff on the nhs and that they could, might be able to have a, a, a proper an appointment with a specialist um without having to pay you hundreds, know, of that, pounds. hundreds of pounds and, for. and you've also got to think devon and cornwall were mostly rural and they people think that's idyllic living in the country but when you've only got one bus a week and you can't drive. Our transport links are dreadful. What What are you going to do as a woman, you know, perimenopausal, menopausal woman who is literally full of anxiety right at the end of their tether, maybe have a family as well? You've got that juggle. What are you going to do? Where are you going to go? And you're not being listened to. Yeah. So, you know. And I can see the emotion that that still brings up in you. I can still see that that's, you know, a driving force. And I think the minute we stop thinking about those other women I mean certainly I know we've spoken that's why I'm in this space I never ever thought I'd be in this space but because of the woefully inadequate experiences I had I just thought till there's the last breath in my body I'm gonna try and make a difference for other other people because it isn't just women is it it's the families it's our children it's our work oh, colleagues yes. that that are all affected about this so Coming on to our next question then, which is like, you know, you don't just leave it at menopause. I love your post, particularly at the moment, you know, everything that's going on in America, um, you know, and about the rights we have over our own bodies, how, you know, our bodies have become state property overnight. Who knew, you know, um, how is it that you find yourself sort of bringing all of that in? You know, where does your passion for that come? I mean, do you see yourself as feminists? completely 100 percent. i'm a feminist yeah it's not a bad it's not a naughty word it's not a bad word and it certainly doesn't equal misandry there's a lot of people that think if you're a feminist you you hate men that is yeah. completely no. and utterly my, my husband's all, a feminist all my my boys my husband are both feminists yeah. all it means is that you believe that the world should be equal for you know for for men and for women and and so it's we yeah we are completely and um there's so much there's just so much going on I mean, where do you start? Where, with it where at the do moment? you start? I mean, that there's it's it's huge, isn't it, Amanda? And we've only got a small platform, but we sort yeah. of believe if we can put put things out there, there's a lot of people. Look what's happening in in Afghanistan at the moment. There where the people, um, the women there aren't even allowed to speak in their own house. They're not allowed to sing without permission. No. They're not allowed to show any of themselves. Up to a few years ago, they were going to school and they were doctors, they were teachers, yeah. and they can't speak in their own homes so it, i i 
we I mean, truly one, believe it's up to us just to, to keep to, banging that yeah. drum you know we're only little but we'll keep banging uh, it. can i just change that narrative ever so slightly just looking down at my phone you're hardly little you've got 78.9 thousand followers <laughs> <laughs> can i just rejig that needle ever so slightly lou you're not little <laughs> oh all, i know though. but i think when when you when you look at the bigger picture you feel little don't you but then you know, voices, voices have got to be heard, voices have got to come together. And I think it's, we are in a privileged position because we're taking, we're having space, we're having conversations with you and we're allowed those conversations in a safe environment, in a, in a safe way. And we know nothing's going to happen to us. Yes. When you have that taken away from you, who's going to speak for those women? I know, and it's absolutely terrible. I mean, when, when we think about menopause, that's even translated as age of despair in a lot yeah. of arabic communities so you're absolutely right and but i think there's something wonderful about women coming together isn't there i know women can be pretty vile to one another also but i think in the main when women decide to join forces and rally around each other they are such a force to be reckoned with it's a force yeah. my husband always yeah. says if you, my husband always says if you want to get stuff done you know it's the women that will get the stuff done yes. blokes will just talk about it yeah yeah <laughs> definitely <laughs> Ain't that the truth? <laughs> yeah. that, hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I don't and... know about you, but menopause has definitely brought us a, a sense of um, kinship with other mm. women, um, more so than I ever felt. I think for, I mean, I, I don't know um, age of people listening, but I'm 55 and lose 56. And we were brought up in the, in the 80s. We were in our teens where you had to dress like a man, uh, have no sleep like a man. Work you, like a man. Work like it? a man. Was, where, yeah. Whereas, so you kind of, Really, I felt pushed away from my women friends and, and more because I wanted to be, you know, and this being sort of, womanly yeah. as well, wasn't yeah. it? You know, now I feel I feel so much more empowered and womanly and feminine than I ever did yeah. back then. And drawn towards yeah. other women, you know, I find other women now much more fascinating. Yeah. And I love to be in a cafe where there's a group of women chatting and laughing. And I just, yeah. I yeah it's it builds just, you up doesn't yeah, it yeah it does yeah and you do such a good a great job of that and it is interesting because I, I remember seeing um you might have seen the same thing taylor swift talking about just even the differences isn't it you know when you've got a go-getting guy and you know and, and a woman equivalent and well, she's seen as aggressive yeah um you know i was on a, uh, my my own podcast came out today and it was with an amazing professor called uh professor kathleen react and she has been looking at menopause since 2013 and what it's like in the workplace. And she said the stereotypes would knock your socks off. She said you've got the invisible woman, then you've got the mothering manager, and then you've got the very overly visible person. You know, these are the sorts of things we're up against. You know, it's like, I just want to come to work, just saying. Yeah. yeah. Don't need all the badges and labels and titles. Just want to come to work and do a great job. Thanks very much. Because you don't get that same um, critique um on on men so i think you're right it's it's, a, it's a, i feel it's a great time to be alive a great time to see this tidal shift and to be part of that is 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 really exciting so with that in mind how do you think these conversations that you're having can actually change narratives around menopause maybe in the workplace and beyond you know cuz i'm always asked for great podcasts so you know people hearing what you're about and the fact that men can be feminists too you know, how do you think we could change the narrative in workplaces even faster than we already are by things like your podcast and the things you're talking about? What do you think you would do? I think signposting them to the the correct information and the great stuff that you do as well, Amantha. I think, yeah, the signposting for me would be a big thing. Um, uh, language for me would yeah. be a, a big thing and, and not being afraid to talk about things that previously would have it's being I would have been open, by. isn't it? One thing I've noticed with men, uh, some men generally, and maybe more in the workplace when they're colleagues rather than real friends, um, is that if two women are talking about, um, I went to the doctors the other day, and quite often the man will walk away because they think it's women's things. So, and that's partly down to us because we've gone, Lou, I wanted to talk to you about, um, about people. And so we're embarrassed, so they're embarrassed, so they move away. I think as soon as we can make that leap from that to um, Gerald, I don't know, Gerald. It was Gerald. <laughs> so I'm, over here. I'm, just, hey. I'm, I'm just telling, I'm just telling Lou about me, Itchy Fanny. Do you want to join this conversation? <laughs> that might be a bit much for Gerald. As a starter, maybe. 
He might have a partner. Might have... Do you know what else was itching last night? You just don't know, do you? Everything we've done, Amantha, everything we've done. We did a menopause cafe with BBC Radio Dev and we did their first menopause cafe live. And the TV um, people came to the second one. And the, what I don't know if he, I think it was a cameraman. He came over he afterwards. He was a reporter. I, I've and, seen him reporting yeah, on the telly. That's what he was. He was asking us about his friend, friend's yeah, friend. Yeah, it's always boy. a friend. Yeah. Um, and she did this, she did that, she did this. And could it be menopause? Because the marriage is breaking down. What do you, you know, what do you think? Well, you went off actually. She looked, she went off and went and did a face interview with the Beeb. And I was then chatting to this guy <laughs> who was in bits. Yeah, yeah, about his friend. <laughs> about yeah, his about friend. his friend's wife. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was, but that all came about after just language using the yes. correct was, was, using yeah, the correct language was. for our body parts not yeah. calling things like silly names um and having those conversations with with all genders um and not being trying not to be embarrassed ourselves and then because if we're embarrassed they'll be embarrassed yes. and i think what you just um, showcase people is you do it with humor you know, and I know Hubert, yeah. you've got to be careful of that in the workplace and, you know, the laws are changed around that. But the reality is, you know, if we're going to get people to come through the door and actually take part in an awareness session, we have to make it inclusive. We often just start by saying to people when June and I do our sessions, we just say, how many people have got women in their immediate family? Of course, everyone puts their hand up. Yeah. Welcome, because this is relevant to you then, yeah. you know. Yeah. And and it is so wonderful. And I, th and I think you're right. We've got to maybe go gently. and. We hear so often men are terrified to come in the room because they're frightened of saying the wrong thing. They're frightened of, you know, we don't want to make it about us. But, you know, is our mere presence going to sort of like set something up here? Um, but what we find is the more you normalise it, yeah. like everyday conversation, then that's how we start to make a difference. So I celebrate and applaud you. And I think and I think it is. And I think humour is a great way of of levelling that out. So So coming on to your guest, I mean, Gosh, the, the amount of guests that you've had and experts is just amazing. And I'm really, <clears throat> I'm going to really put you on the spot here and you might go, oh, we can't possibly choose. And obviously you don't need to choose me, but what one <laughs> guest, <laughs> what one guest or story has particularly influenced your own views on menopause and women's health? Is there anyone or any guests that you can think of, you know, I know it's a terrible question to ask you, but you know, you, you seem so moved often by, the guests that you have on and the stories okay. they tell. <clears throat> they are, I mean, we've had, we can honestly yeah. say we've had no bad guests. They've all been absolutely brilliant. But um, somebody that always stands out for me is a, the beautiful person, Claire Borhammer. Oh, How, yeah. well, I haven't said that right. Bo Bauhammer, Bauhammer. Who, who um, she does a lot for vulval cancer awareness yeah. and lichen sclerosis. And they're, they're two sort of things that, of, uh, we're talking about language the two things that people um very rarely know about and um they're rare but they're not that rare you know and and it's sort of things that people don't want to talk about we, she's been absolutely amazing she's a, person, she? she's a wonderful she? person yeah. to talk to and can you explain a little bit more about um lichen sclerosis can we just do a little bit here just to explain what that is and how you know about vulval cancer because yeah you're right it's people People don't know what they don't know, do they? No, they don't. Well, I mean, a lot of people in menopause know about um, vaginal atrophy or, yes. you know, dryness of the vagina. But um, sometimes that can be misdiagnosed and it can actually be lichen sclerosis or you can have lichen sclerosis from a child, which Claire did. Um, and it, the symptoms are things like very itchy vulva. It's not vagina. It's not inside. It's outside. So it's very itchy vulva, perineum, that sort of area. Um, so itchy, you burning. Um, can't sit down. Can't sit down. Sometimes, as you, um, especially in menopause, if it becomes, it, um, the labias can stick together. Yes. Um, the the skin can grow over the hood of the clitoris. Um, it can go white, silvery, um, sort of color. And so I, yeah, we we would like everyone to check their vulvas every month, just like we check our breasts. Yeah. Um, yeah, and. It's a very small percentage, but if that's left long enough without treatment, you can treat it with steroid. But if if it's left long enough, like Claire was, because she had it since she was five and 30 odd years later, um, they found she had this. It actually um, changed uh, to uh, vulva cancer, which started as just a little abscess on her vulva. 
um and now she's had to she was sort of stage three or four i think yeah, yeah. um and so she has she's had to have extensive surgery um which could have all been uh you know sort of dealt with much much earlier that so that her story involved a lot of gaslighting a lot of uh you know go away you know um throughout her life so that really really yeah. affected us in a good way and yeah, it's made it us made more you... it was her story about when she obviously she went for her smear tests and she was saying that she had a problem with her vagina because she didn't know the words it wasn't her vagina it was her vulva so it wasn't looked at at all, was it? So it's having, again, like Jinty said, it's having that terminology and using the correct terminology. Um, and they don't look at smear. It's knowing that they won't look at, they're not looking for vulva. They're looking for things in your cervix. They're not looking for womb cancer. They're not looking for ovarian cancer. They're not looking for vulva or vagina cancer. So don't presume that you've had that and you're all clear. That you're all clear for all of those things. Yeah, now you've, you've just prompted me and I've, don't know that I've got it to hand, but I normally I normally have my 3D vulva, which I should have had oh, ready because yeah. I should have known you two would have mentioned it. Um, <laughs> and right and, right, <laughs> and rightly so. But you're absolutely right. It's so important to know our anatomy and not to be embarrassed about it. In fact, I'm known in sessions to pull it out of my handbag or I've taken it abroad with me if I'm speaking abroad, you know, have it deliberately to provoke conversation. You go, oh, yeah. There's my vulva again in my yeah. bag. Um, you know, just pull it out. I've got no shame at all. But but you're you're, you're so right. And um, you know, I was talking to a lady who um, she runs an Orthodox Jewish community, and she said we can't talk about these things, but we can talk about them in our closed circle. And so she regularly has models and things. Um, so I think it is so so important that we find a way, however we need to. We find we find a way and help keep talking about it but yes that is a particularly poignant story and yeah. and and I think that's what you're you're so good at because what you do as you incorporate your your book well I didn't ask Lou Lou anyone else particularly is there any anyone else that I tell you for me it was the one we did in the last series I think Raina oh yes we met her at a networking event in Plymouth and it's uh she was helped by the charity Gifted Women okay. which is run by an amazing woman in Plymouth isn't yeah. it? Yes, in Devon. Yeah. In Devon. And um when you look at Raina, you would stereotype her because of every you know, the way the tattoos, the way the way she looks. She was the most eloquent, beautifully spoken, and had such a story to tell about um abuse, rape, she'd been in prison, the prison so she's not long yes. yeah, the prison, been out yeah. of prison. And how she was treated and how the system completely failed her. I mean, we both were in tears. She was in tears. We were in tears. It was, yeah, she was absolutely remarkable. And I still think about her now. And and again, it's about how gifted women, it's a very small charity started by one woman, again, yeah. who, who was employing other women that from prison or that had been uh, drug addicts just to help them get their foot on the ladder of the yes. work CV work. together, yeah. that kind of thing. <clears throat> and she started this gifted women and that's what she does now. And, you know, again, it's when women come together, they do incredible, things. incredible thing. Big and now things Rain happen. is out there. She's doing it. She, she is. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And that's the thing. It's just like, I'm not taking no for an answer. No. Yeah. You know, um, we know just how um, disadvantaged women in prisons are as a result of this and menopause and it's dismissed you're more likely to get an antidepressant which we know anyway and it just keeps people quiet doesn't it and compliant you know but we don't send people out being the best versions of themselves you know we've just we've made them worse in a lot of cases but you know hers is a particularly great story and this is what I mean I mean there's no single episode I know it was a that was an awful question to ask you, but it sort of lends itself into the next question, which is, you know, you include book reviews and discussions in your podcast, you know, and there's a lot of storytelling. And so you do your, you've got your WI bits in there, haven't you? You've got your book reviews. Um, you know, how much do you think literature plays into sort of reshaping this conversation around menopause, you know, and empowering women to own their own health journeys? How how much of literature do you think we could really lean into to sort of help us create our own narrative? I think it, I think it affects us hugely, especially some of the books we've read, uh, like Femina, and you look back and you look at the history of woman 
woman was fantastic and great. She, she, you know, she was worshipped, wasn't she? Mm. In many, many cases. And then we just got sort of slid away and we're witches and we got burnt and we got, you know, all these other things. And the Victorians came along, slapped us right down. And you've got all that. So throughout history, you go right the way back and you can see where the women started, where they went to. And I personally believe we're, we're on the up again. We're mm. building ourselves up again. And I think having that narrative and knowing where you came from in that respect, you know, your your foremothers, your people before you, those generations and those women that did so much, that's so important. And, and storytelling, how, how women it? are written. I mean, yeah. when when men write women, they don't tend to get it right generally. Um, and I think that's changing. When we were growing up and reading books about women, it formed. It does help. It, any media, T TV it? does the same. Films yeah. do the same. And in that era, eighties, nineties, um, women were always the screaming ones you know, save me save me um and you know a bit idiotic um and if you weren't like you say you were the one that was saving other people but you were seen as a bit bossy or a little bit yeah. you know sort of out there um and I think that has changed with brilliant authors go from for kids like Jacqueline Wilson you know and and people like that I've noticed the difference mm. in our girls oh, yeah they've got a complete and I'm sure that's to do with literature yeah. to do with media the things that they've been um sort of you know watching and and reading it's it plays a huge a huge part Lou prefers fiction I prefer facts yeah. so we get kind of a mix yeah. I like statistics and research she I likes like a bit of she likes a story I like to read a bit of stuff <laughs> yeah kind of right, right, with a nice cup of tea probably I would imagine yeah. <laughs> and a biscuit <laughs> and a biscuit or seven yes I, I, I'm with I'm with you so tell me, in all this time, what have you found to be the most rewarding aspects of a friendship together, creating something so wholesome, such as the Women Kind Collective podcast, and actually bringing women together? Because we haven't talked about that. You have done a sterling job. Um, I've witnessed that myself of bringing women together and creating safety, a circle of love and influence that people have sort of really lent into um, over a weekend, you know. Tell me, what, what are the things that give you the most joy and pride when you think about all that you're doing at this stage in your life? You know, this is a pat on the back moment, just to say in this question. Yeah, this, what this, are you most this, proud of? One thing I thought of a, a, immediately is, because it's just happened, is the other day we had, Lou, Lou was looking oh, after yes. Instagram yeah. um, yes. and, and she sent me a message we'd had. We won't name the person, but um, so one of our followers um, messaged us to say, to thank us they just listened to it wasn't us really it was um Ju uh, julie cornish the co colorectal surgeon yes and she said, after listening to that and after years of struggling i went to um i'm getting the gist of it aren't i am yeah she didn't, you know um and she and she went and got help and she's now seeing a pelvic floor um physio and she's going for the surgery that she's always needed wow. and she said i wanted to thank you for because um it's that sort of information again it's a very taboo uh, colorectal bowels poo nobody wants to talk about um and actually we've had about four or five of those same texts from that same podcast wow about prolapse and about how they've it's, it's made it's them stigma and taboo isn't it, it? It's stigma and taboo so that sort of thing when you're at a bit of a oh god this is exhausting <laughs> and i can't talk about it because it's really embarrassing yeah yeah you know yeah and then to have somebody go I actually listened to that I had my light bulb moment and, and I knew I had to go back to my GP and Phenomenal. I did you know and that uh, that for us we just said if it makes it all if we, yeah, if one, if we have one of them it would be worthwhile it would yeah. be yeah. 135 episodes and hours and hours of our life it was worth it because you um, ultimately mantha you you can although I love statistics and facts um it's it, it but there's real people underneath all those statistics aren't there yes. every single yeah, person is a real broad. person that's yeah. struggling and and so I think that's when you get like a, a message like that you just think yes that's oh I'm I'm so with you like you know and that's the thing I always say and I'm going to say to you what people say to me you'll never know how many people's lives you've positively affected you just won't ever know but I'm I'm going to tell you what people tell me keep going because you know, we don't do it for that. But actually, if someone like I was sat watching that my mum, your dad last night, my guilty pleasure, I know, don't judge me. <laughs> and I was horrified. 
terrified to see what comes on at 9.30, a tenor lady advert mm. by, by a certain programme. And I was like, listen, there's a place for that, right? But actually, have we talked about things like localised estrogen? Have we talked about pelvic floor? Have we talked about bladder health? Have we done all of that? Or are we just going to stick another product on it? And I think that's what it's largely come down to. Unless people, when they're on the very busy school run, um, I always, always was listening to you when I was waiting to pick my daughter up at the station. I was like, no, I'll pick you up because the time it takes me to get there, wait and drive back, we can listen to Ginty and Lou. And it was all, and my daughter would sit with me listening and we'd laugh in our heads off. And it was just like, honestly, the best way to consume information, you know. And the reality is it just maybe lights a spark for someone to go and get a test, speak to their mate and going, aren't you having that itchy, yeah. whatever, yeah. you know, yeah. shouldn't you really get that checked out? I was listening to a podcast. So it's, it's, it's all of those great things that you're doing in service. And tell us about the joy of bringing people together in the form of a retreat. What is it that you love about that? I don't oh, know what I love it. It just warms your heart, doesn't it? It's, it's, and yeah. you see that, and I know you experienced it because you you were with us on, on that retreat. But you experience that you they they open up so much, and they feel safe enough with you to open up and to to tell the fears, to to have all that vulnerability out in the open in a room with other women that they feel so safe to do that. For me, that was really emotional. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Again, it's just being with other women. Yeah. I think I think I, I almost um, crave it. I always crave that kind of um, being. You you get sort of energized by it. Yeah, definitely. And we've all got so much to learn as we go right back around. Um, you never stop learning. We've all got so much to learn. And, and what kind came out of that was they not only learned things, they realized how much they already knew. Yeah. yeah. Because they're telling, uh, and you're going, oh, wow, I never knew that. And oh, oh, I knew, and yeah. you, you don't realize what you know until you start talking to other other women. You know, That's lovely. And, and I do feel it's very empowering at a time where we maybe think we're getting smaller. It's a time of expansion, isn't it? Like the lovely Kate Codrington, whose book's up behind you there, the Perimenopause Journal. Love, love her, Diane Danzabrink. You know, all of these people, it's about expansion, not contraction. It, yeah. We're here. We're here to fill the space that we're given, not yeah. give it, not give it away to someone else, or make not ourselves smaller. No, de definitely not. And so long may it continue. You know, with all those episodes under your belt, and they've got loads more guests coming up, and we've got a little, a little change up of format, which is hugely exciting. I'm hugely excited about that. Get that table sorted out because we don't want a squeaky table in the. I've got my leg against it now. <laughs> my hips gone now, Amanda. <laughs> It's all right. The podcast can afford to get you a new one. Um, so, so with that in mind, then, what's your hope for the future? If I can ask both of you individually, what you know, when you think about where you'd like to be when we wrap around at, at episode two hundred and whatever, and I might pop in and say, "How's it going? What, what, you know, what do you feel it's achieved? You know, what's your hope for the space of menopause and women's health generally in the next decade?" But for me, the space of menopause, I would like a bit more coming together of minds, a little bit less uh, one room over there for the whatevers and one room over there. I'd like a little bit more um, Meeting because in the it's middle. very confusing for a lot of the people we speak, speak to at the cafes, a lot of people that message us, um, HRT to not HRT um, and everything in between. Um, and I know there's a lot of people out there that are bridging that gap, but they haven't got the loudest voices or the biggest platforms. So I'd love personally love to see everyone, you know, it might be idealistic, but like one massive retreat of ours. Yes. Everybody yeah. just in there, in the learning zone. from each other, yeah. telling people what they know and people actually listening. <laughs> I know. That's the thing, isn't it? We don't want a vacuum. No. We want to be radiate. Was it we want to be radiate? Annie always says, be a radiator, not a drain. Perfect. I love that. Well, she's hmm. always got great wisdom, hasn't she? she? And that, that expression through what you're wearing. What about you, Lou? You know, for what me, do you I hope? Think... <sighs> I know, yeah, do you know what? I'd like a sponsor. I'd like a sponsor for this podcast. There we go. Yeah. Because we, what we would that enable you to do? Sense. What would it enable you to do? Because let's talk about the business of podcasting. What would it enable you to do if you had a sponsor? So at the moment we do everything. Obviously, it's all our own time. It's so we have to, we, we, we work elsewhere. We've got obviously. You've got, got real lives outside of the podcast. We've got real lives and main jobs and, and podcasting takes, the way. takes a long time. Yeah, doesn't the real it? life gets in the way yeah. of what we enjoy. Yeah. It would actually give a, it would 
for me, it would just fill my heart and give me much more joy to be doing this as my job. Yeah. Yes. It, it kind of is our job, but it it's, is an our job. it's an unpaid job. It's a labour of love. It is a labour. But we love, we love the labour. Yeah. We love yeah. the labour. So to actually be, you know, be able to give up some of the other stuff and spend more time on, on what we love and being able to produce more stuff. That for we women, to for help women, to help women. Them would be brilliant, oh, wouldn't be it? Amazing. Yeah, be because yeah. not everyone has the, the means or... Even the motivation, do they? But actually, if you're making this, if this is available, and most people have a smartphone, access to a computer, you're on YouTube, you know, th then that would be absolutely wonderful. So let's put an official shout out then. They're all they're interested in any inquiries, basically, is what I was hearing there. Um, yeah. And lots of businesses watch this. So um, with that in mind, how can people be in touch with you, follow you, learn a bit more about you? What what social media handles can you sort of direct people to? Instagram. I do the Instagram because it's the one I know. Go so for it. We're on, we're on Instagram with well, our 78.9, maybe soon to be 79K followers. Yeah. Um, Womenkind Collective. That's easy, isn't it? it and it's you brilliant. Brilliant. I think YouTube's the same. Women, YouTube's the same. Just remember, it's women kind, not women, man. not if woman, you, man kind. The plural, else, so, the yeah. plural, because we're being women being kind in a collective. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And our menopause clinic for Devon campaign. If you want to have a look, check that out and sign the petition. Um, the website is menopauseclinicfordevon.co.uk. We have got a website. There's lots of stuff on there. It's not been updated for a while, so forgive me. But there is letters you can Don't write worry. to your MP. So if you want a clinic in your area or you want to find out what's going on, you can uh, use a template, write to your MP. You can sign the petition from there. Um, yes. And hopefully we'll have some news. On well, that. let's put those links. I'll get those links from you after. We'll drop those in the show notes. But for now, oh, my goodness. Thank you so much. Just tell me one thing. What's going to keep you going now? What do you use to keep energizing yourselves? What do you each do? Other. I was going to say each other. <laughs> she picks me up off the floor <laughs> <laughs> quite a lot of the time. Uh, yeah. And I get a good elbow. So, yeah, each other, I think, as well. And I think that that's the good thing about working with your best friend, isn't it? It is. Yeah. And, and can I say no agenda. no agenda, much like this podcast episode, they honestly didn't know what I was going to ask them. <laughs> Haven't they done so well? <laughs> so honestly, I'm so thrilled. It's absolutely brilliant. So for now, thank you so much. Womenkind Collective, you are smashing it. Let's hope we can get you a sponsor. And thank you for all you continue to do. Oh, I love you, Amantha. Love thank you, Amantha. You. Thank you. Oh, you're very, very welcome. Just got to press record. Stop. Bye.